Time for our season's predictions then. And let's start with the title winners. Who's going to be champions? Well, they've both gone for Manchester City. I thought, Jamie, that you might have been swayed by how impressive Liverpool have been, building a momentum. Listen, it's early days. Liverpool still only qualify for the top four on the last day of the season. They haven't challenged for a title this team yet. That, that may be the next step, and then you sort of go on from, from that. But I, th I, th I think if you'd asked, I don't know, I think 99% of people at look at City were saying how impressive Liverpool have been at the start of the season. How impressive have City been? I mean, they went to Arsenal, you know, what a sort of a, a top six rival. And then what they did to Huddersfield, yeah, they expect them to win. But the manner in which they won, I mean, they could have been, I think it could have been about two or three minutes, about five minutes. I mean, that's how good they are. You think of the players that are missing also. So I think it's difficult to look past City. And I think if City do what I expect them to, I expect City to have a sort of period of domination, really. I think, uh, hopefully not from Liverpool's point of view, but I think at the end of Pep's time, we could be talking about one of the, the, the great teams in this country. Well, you talk about the missing players, Kevin De Bruyne, we know already out for, we think, a couple of months minimum. News tonight that Claudio Bravo, of course, reserve goalkeeper for Manchester City, has ruptured his Achilles, which is obviously a long-term injury. Um, Angus Gunner's gone out, Joe Hart's gone out, so Daniel Grimshaw, we think, 20-year-old, will be the backup keeper to Edison. You talked earlier, Gary, about sometimes things happen and there are lots of situations that can build was that the only sort of thing that you think could really stop Manchester City? Yeah, because I think during the season, a lot, a lot of, there are a lot of obstacles. Um, there's no doubt about that. And I think if you think about City uh, last season, they were quite... The best players were there. I mean, company in and out, but, to, but towards the end when they needed him. Uh, Edison was always there. De Bruyne, Silva... Um, for me, if they did get injuries to two or three players, that's any club, by the way, not just a City, but it would be signed. I mean, I'm not sure the rules on goalkeepers. Are you allowed to bring someone in as an emergency if there's a couple of injuries in a certain position? I thought goalkeepers, there was a separate, a separate rule the City can apply, I'm not sure. Obviously, the number one is Edison, but if he was to get injured, then it would potentially pose them a big problem if they were having to call upon someone of, obviously, you know, no experience. Tried, yeah. yeah, so I think that things like that do... There's a long way to go. Well, these things play out in February, March and April, but what... Liverpool, Manchester United, Chelsea, Tottenham, the teams that are chasing City have to think in the first part of the season, they have to gain encouragement from somewhere. The first two games have been no encouragement against Arsenal and against uh, Huddersfield, but there has to be some encouragement. So well, somebody has to leave one on City and give the others a way of playing against them or a, a, a seed of doubt in City's mind that can make anyone think that they can be caught. Let, me, let me take you to um, one of the tweets that have come in. Absolute pile to work through here. Um, this correspondent thinks that Manchester City are going to run away with it again. The question is, who do you think will come second? <laughs> Say it. Um, <laughs> at the moment, at the moment, as I sit here today, I would say Liverpool. But I'm hoping Manchester United can get their act together and, you know, settle into a rhythm, settle into a shape, settle into a formation, get a run of results. Big game next Monday that we've got on here against Tottenham to get back on track. Yeah, I agree. I Liverpool. agree with that. Yeah, I think so. Listen, it's not that Liverpool are, are miles ahead of sort of United, Spurs, Chelsea. I don't see that. I think it'd be a, it'd be a fight between those teams to get as close as they can to City. I think Liverpool might just edge it. But is it is it the transfer business that, that for you has put them ahead? I think the big one's the goalkeeper. I think if Liverpool were to come into this season without changing the goalkeeper, I think everyone would, no one has been predicting a title challenge or coming second. I think the goalkeeper, and we haven't really, he looks brilliant on the ball. I think that's what we can say straight away. He made a couple of good saves you'd expect him to make today. But I think it just gives people belief before you even actually see him do anything. It just, you just feel better. It probably as a player, Van Dijk spoke about it afterwards. I think the supporters. And I think, yes, they've all. Uh, Catering, who looks, you know, as I said, the real deal to start with. But really, you saw what the players they brought in. The only ones who are going to go into the first 11 are the goalkeeper and Cater, really. So uh, I think the goalkeeper is a massive one, but still remains to be seen how good he is. OK, so we've got uh, Manchester City and Liverpool. What about the rest of the top four? How will they line up? Um, so you've both missed out Chelsea. Yeah, I think Tottenham have, to be fair, over a period of two or three years now, been consistent enough and still retain all their best players. 
for us to actually show a level of belief in them that thinks that they should be in the top four again because they've won our trust. they performed season in, season out, and it's a brilliant performance by Maurizio Pochettino there with no budget. No budget. Chelsea? Yeah, very impressed. The, the first couple of games, it's, it's hard to sort of leave someone out, really. But uh, I just look at Chelsea, I think of the Thursday night situation as well, Thursday, Sunday. The goalkeeper, world record transfer, he was, was still a, a young keeper. He's, and listen, he may go on to be one of the world's best, but he's not Courtois just yet. So they've actually lost one of the best goalkeepers in the world. This lad may go on to be that, but that remains to be seen. So uh, I just think the other side have got the edge on. But listen, we're talking... What are we talking? <laughs> Fine lines. Fine, Fine lines. lines. Fine That's lines. What Fine margins. Uh, <laughs> what about our next category? Let's have a look. And I think we talked about um, top six challenges. Are, you could argue best of the rest if it's going to be the same top six as last season. So Jamie started off. We're talking about Everton, Jamie. Why have you got them in seventh place? I like the manager. I'm, I've always liked him since I was watching Hull uh, quite a lot when he first came. Yeah, okay, they went down. I think he started well at Wofford, then Everton come in and sort of fell apart there. But there's something I like about that manager when I've seen his teams play. Uh, the transfer business they did sort of on the last day. I think without that business on the last day, you were sort of looking at it thinking he hasn't brought enough in, the, the performances and results were so poor in pre-season. But I think that's given everyone a lift and of course the, the two results that they've had. And also the performance as well, I think especially at the weekend, they were, they were very good by all, uh, by all accounts and, and the lad he spent a few quid on, uh, Rick Allison, has, has come in and done well. Could they even break into the top six? No. No. No, I don't think so. But what I would say is that I, can't, I haven't got nothing. I haven't got anything to add on Everton than what Jamie said. What I would say is that I think that Crystal Palace, the team we've seen tonight, they're likely not to go far in the cup competitions. They're likely to have three weeks. They could be serious challengers for the position that we're talking about with Everton. They, they could seriously be alongside Everton in that sort of seventh place. I genuinely think that. Mo Salah um, pipped Kevin De Bruyne for most of the end of season accolades last time round for Player of the Year. But uh, who do the boys think is going to win it this time? Well, we have agreement. Who would have thought? David Silva, Jamie? Listen, we, we haven't got a clue who's going to be Player of the Year, <laughs> but what I'm saying is... What, what's that guess based on? No, well, I'd, I'd love to see him win it. I think that's what it's based on. He, he, was, he was brilliant yesterday. Uh, Again, and he's just a player. I just think he's one of the greats of the Premier League era. I, I think he's going to go down as City's greatest ever player when he, he finally hangs his boot up at the club. Hopefully that's a long time uh, to come. But I think in picking Silva, I think he is one of the best players in the Premier League. But I'm picking him because I'd love to see him yeah. win the Premier League. And I think, I think City will win the league, so you think there's a good chance that that player may come from City. I know Salah did it last year, but if there was anyone from City to win it, I'd want him. I think David Silva is a player that's quite unique, that he neutralises every single football fan, probably professional football player from every other club in the country, that everybody universally will just love him and appreciate him and admire him. That's a unique quality, particularly when you think of sort of the level of rivalry in football. A bit like it, us, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he is a brilliant, brilliant player, an amazing player. And I think he's one of those. Comes to one of those times where he's a, he, he, everyone likes him. His level of performance is high. If City do win the league, De Bruyne is going to miss the first couple of months of the season. So his level of performances are even more important. His contribution is more important to the team in terms of making sure that they don't miss him. Obviously, other players have to come in as well. But for me, David Silva is, a, is a, just a brilliant example of what a professional football player should be. He's just one of those players you, you never hear any negative press. You, you can't ever. Have Read any negative press about him? You? You know, so I think I said this last season. I've, he's been in Manchester now five, six years, and I would have expected eventually. You think about, well, I don't know even know where he lives. Don't know where he goes out. Don't know where he eats. Oh, do you want to know where he lives? No, I mean, <laughs> not stalker or anything. You know what I mean? Take his no, but the idea that you, know, you think about the consummate professional. <laughs> <laughs> and then you think about the idea that he's never whinged about being in Manchester, about the weather, he's never whinged about wanting to go back home, he's never whinged about wanting to play for Barcelona. Jose, he's about, even if he whinged about wanting to play for Barcelona, he's immersed himself in the city. You just think, to me, him and Aguero, I have to say, you know, company as well, I thought over a period of four, five, six seasons that the likes of Silva and Aguero would say, eventually, I want to go back to Spain, I want to go back and play. They haven't done, and it's a credit to them that they've, they've absolutely been professional. Well, we'll stay with you on the, on the young talent, because maybe this is a young man that you've, you've plumped for who could really benefit from watching these two, Kevin De Bruyne it, and David Silva. It's more from an England perspective, and I think of what England lacked in the summer. And obviously, Jack Wilshere's had his moments, and you think of Oxlade-Chamberlain, potentially, but somebody from central mid 
midfield area from in those pockets who can sort of create chances in open play. And England liked that. They had a lot of runners. They had the likes of Lingard and Sterling and Rashford. Obviously, Kane up front as a sort of a, a, as a, a point. But in terms of just that creativity, that bit of class, that little bit of something that open, unlocks the game, they lacked it. And Lalana has not been has been in and out of the team over the last 12 months. I think Foden's the one that if he gets a run at City of any type of games, even if it's sort of 20 games this season, building towards the next tournament, it's more from an England perspective, he could be somebody who provides that little bit of something in the final third. So he's just that's the reason I've chosen him. Jamie, you've gone for Ryan Sessignon. Yes, I mean, outstanding in the Championship. We've yet to see if he can sort of deliver in, in the Premier League, but, but he will over time. And uh, I think the debate is where he will be eventually, whether he'll be sort of left winger, left back, will he eventually go to that attacking uh, left back? And you think of not so much the problems, but for a long time over the years, it was also about English players on the left hand side, uh, that left foot going forward. So. Hopefully him, but Fulham will need to do well also. I uh, want to watch, finally, and we, we kind of left this open, left it to their own interpretation. And, um, Gary, we'll start with you again on the man we've seen in action tonight, Alisson. Yeah, I put Alisson because I think if Liverpool are going to challenge, then the goalkeeper, to me, I mean, at the end of the season when Jurgen Klopp said he was going to keep faith with the two goalkeepers that he had, uh, I thought it was a strange thing at the time. I, I just didn't see how it could happen if Liverpool were genuinely going to challenge for the title. Alisson in the World Cup, I watched him. He looked good with his feet. There's a couple of things that came off him from a parrying point of view. But first test pass tonight. In terms of one to watch, not necessarily because I'm sort of looking forward to seeing him. I'm, I'm thinking in terms of answering the questions that you would need to answer of coming into a new league. Tonight he's answered them uh, by doing really good work on the ball, but also with his goalkeeping work as well. You've gone for Naby Keita. Were you impressed with him again tonight? Yes, I was. I mean, I've been in, in the first half. He, he sort of let it go through his legs and put Salah through. It was a fantastic piece of play. Uh, I just just the, the praise Jürgen Klopp given when he signed him. He spoke about in the Bundesliga. There was only I think Thiago or Bayern Munich we felt was a better midfielder. Sort of when he, he made that sign, and that's some praise considering some of the midfield players. Just at Bayern Munich, maybe at Dortmund also. And listen, he's made a he's made a good start. Only two games, but at this moment he, he looks like he could be in a a top player for Liverpool. 